today we are in Halifax's scenic Point Pleasant and I'm going to be casting my sins into the sea. So what did I mean by casting my sins into the sea? Well, for today's video we're talking about reflection and so for the first little chunk of that you are going to be watching me do something called Tashlich. Tashlich is a Jewish tradition that happens in the fall, which is the, or the beginning of fall, I guess, yeah, it's the Jewish New Year. The way it works for the Jewish New Year is that you have Rosh Hashanah, which is like the New Year, the New Year starts, and that was last Wednesday, a week ago. And then you have something called Yom Kippur, which is literally, and it's where you repent for your sins. So you start the new year, and then the first like week or so of the new year, like, 10 days of the new year, is where you think about and you reflect on your sins so that you can repent on Yom Kippur. And one way that people reflect on and kind of purge their sins is through a activity process called Tashlich. What you do is you take breadcrumbs and you throw them into a large body of water, symbolic, to kind of represent throwing away of your sins. It's actually slightly controversial. I know certain types of Jews don't do it because it's seen as a little bit of a cop-out, like it doesn't force you to actually reflect on them, but I think I love this time of year. I know like people are very sad, obviously, and it's like serious, but I really like it because it gives like an actual structure for reflection and a way to like reflect on your year. And I think that that's really important and I really like that. And it gives you these 10 days to think about what you've done, think about your actions, and think about the things that you regret. When I was younger, Yom Kippur was all about, you know, Sophie, like, what things have you done that you regret this year? And you, you know, apologize to those people. And, you know, it's so obviously not regret, like, this morning I did laundry and one of my pants had a piece of paper in the pocket that I forgot was there. So that was fucking amazing. I regret that. Um, it's not that type of regret, obviously. <laughs> uh, it's more regretting actions towards others and things that are sins, and I know that sins are kind of seen as like... The term has become a little memed recently, but you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like sins. Sins it can just be like things that you feel bad about, or things that you want to improve on, or things that you know that you regret. And I know I have things that I fucked up this year that I want to improve, and I feel bad about them, whatever, and apologize to the people. And I haven't done Tashlich, this throwing of the bread into the water, since I was a very little kid, it's not like a thing that non-religious Jews normally do, but I normally do Yom Kippur, people fast for Yom Kippur, and I can't do that this year because of certain circumstances, so I thought I'd do Tashlich instead. I really like this kind of poetic idea of like casting your sins into the sea, or there's some biblical quote that's like, I never used to be actually at an ocean, we used to go to little ravines, the Toronto ravines, but now we have the Atlantic Ocean at our disposal. There's water over here and it's very pretty. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna use the muffin crumbs because I was gonna throw that out anyways. Why waste a good piece of bread, am I right? Like how when I try to write a song, sometimes the words just come out wrong. But if I never picked the pen up, held inside and never shared, and oh, was that so eloquent? It wasn't really what I meant, at least you got the notion that I care. And a song well sung is a song well sung, so sing. If nothing else, you must remember that you're still breathing. If I make a big mistake If anything will, it won't take forever Just to find myself again In a subjective sense we've seen a lot Yeah, we make the best of what we've got All we are is everything And everyone we've ever been So tell me not to fall in love with you And frankly, my friend I think that's the sweetest thing you do Over here you can see that's just in this blank area without the land that's the that is the that's that's east that's the other 
Yep, yep, good love. Regal Atlantic Ocean is right there. Obviously, I'm not going to be stating all the things that I, my sins that I'm throwing out because that would be boring and personal, which is a, the worst combination for a YouTube video. <laughs> um, but here's my muffin wrapper. Uh, look at it, it's very pretty. Uh, you know, I just, it's interesting just to ponder on the poetry of kind of throwing things, purging things, a sort of catharsis into the water and into the sea more specifically because you know it's very vast and it's like the question is are the sins getting eaten by the sea are they getting dissolved by it there's one explanation which i really really like which is the idea that uh fish don't have eyelids their eyes are permanently open and so that is kind of a interesting mirror kind of a representation of god being all seeing and then the fish kind of eat the sins, and so it's like God kind of absolves you of your sins because the fish kind of represent him because they can never close their eyes, so they're always seeing, which I think is kind of an interesting. I really like that. I think it's kind of interesting. To be honest, I just read it on Wikipedia like half an hour ago. Everything I'm saying in this video, you can just learn on Wikipedia, so you should probably just go read that and exit out of this video. I'm kidding, actually. And as I throw my little breadcrumbs, into the sea, into the purge my sins into the depths of the sea. Oh, it got way too deep. It's from that boat. And there, this is, the waves are perfect timing. They're taking them, and they're catching them, bringing them back into the middle of the ocean. And it allows me to not be burdened down by them, fully repent, and then move on. And it's really peaceful and a really cool thing. And yeah, I haven't done this since I was like super little. I don't think it's like that common for people to do. I actually have no idea. I just think reflection is nice. It's really nice to be able to think about what you've done and how the good things you've done also, but you know, the things you've done that you regret, and how you can improve and being self-aware and still being confident in yourself despite, you know, obviously making mistakes, because all humans do, we all make mistakes, and kind of being able to trace those mistakes back to certain things, and really having kind of full knowledge of self, and being able to become a better person for the world around you. It's really nice. So let me improve. This year, like every year, I know, make the world a better place, along with all the people living here. A few days later, and it is no longer hot outside, but rainy and freezing, and yes, this is a new room, this is a new space. I haven't put up the posters yet, but I will, and it will be all beautiful and everything, so welcome to the new abode. I may do a room tour at some point, or I probably won't. So, the second part of this video in the theme of reflection is I want to talk about the idea of reflection. I'm in a phase of my life where a lot of things change quickly. You graduate high school and then your first year living on a different city in res and then your first year living on your own and it's all these things happen in really rapid succession and it's obviously no surprise that after a change in my life People want to know how it was. How was first year of university? What was it like living away? Like, at the end of high school, people ask me, so how do you think high school changed you? Like, what, what was it like? What was your best part of it? Like, all these kind of questions that people ask. I'm also obviously guilty of this. If someone goes on a really exciting, cool thing, or they move somewhere different, when they come back, I'm like, whoa, what's it like? Tell me all about it, whatever. Um, what was your favorite part is a question I get asked a lot. I got asked, what was my favorite, like, lecture? the day after first year ended and I was like, oh god, I have no idea and I looked just like an idiot. It looks like I hadn't attended a single lecture. The older I get and the more that I go through different experiences, I've started much more to, I don't know if believe isn't the right word, but like, you know, believe in the idea that it's very difficult, almost impossible to reflect on something immediately after it happens. And this was an idea that I was getting at in my 2015 wrap up video, which is now like almost two years ago that I filmed it, which is first of all crazy, but I was getting at this idea. I wasn't fully able to articulate it properly, and I don't know if I still am, but it's this idea that 
while you're in something or immediately after you finish something, you don't have a good sense of how it has affected you and how it's changed your life and how it's like changed you because all you have is that experience. And I found that you need to have another experience afterwards. So like I need to go through first year of university to see how senior year of high school has actually affected me. Like I need to have another experience so that I can like see how I've acted and see how I've changed. I find that like this really applies to everything. This applies to like camp and like being a counselor and like how how was it being like being a counselor? Well, I didn't really know until I started, until I was back home and acting different ways and doing different things and able to reflect on the ways that I'd acted after the event to see how the event had actually affected me. And this is something that like I just believe it a lot and I think it is really great obviously as I was saying in the previous part of the video for self-reflection and obviously at the end of the year people reflect on that year and I just think that like there's a little bit of a disconnect there because for me at least the way to truly understand how that year has affected you is to have another year and then see how it's been and that's what I was getting at in this 2015 video where I said the first half of 2015 is what I was reflecting on and I was using the second half of the year to see the things so that I, that I could analyze to reflect on. Um, and obviously this isn't universally applicable, it's just something that like I feel like really helps me with reflection. I think like being a counselor for a second year really helped me reflect on the things that I did in the first year and why I did them and why I acted in certain ways and stuff. And um, living on my own has made me realize like reflect sort of how has res affected me, how does living in this building with so many people affect me and like things like that. Um, I think now attending different classes has made me f decide on what my favorite lectures from last year were, whereas when I was asked literally the day after my exam, what was your favorite lecture by like a friend's relative, I had no idea what to say because, you know, I hadn't really had time to skew in the ideas. Obviously, like this idea that I'm presenting is not like a crazy radical notion. You know, it's just like, oh, sometimes you need to stew a bit in your thoughts. Not in a bad way, that has a negative connotation. What's the positive connotation? You need to just you know, meditate on what happened and let it, let it. There's gotta be a positive connotation word. Just, I guess, meditating and then, you know, thinking about, oh, how did this friendship affect me? Well, obviously, there are certain things you know during the friendship, but. A lot of times it's only after you've had other friendships that you can see how that friendship has affected you because now you act differently in the other friendships and really this is not like a radical radical idea it's just something that i think is really helpful to remember because i also think like we ask of ourselves to be self-reflective to a point where it's almost unhelpful like you know it's ooh, it's new year's december 31st let's reflect on a year what were the great things we did this year what were the bad things like how do we change as people you know and like everyone's kind of expected to have these like big ideas about how they've been this year but like you gotta let it stew a bit first and i just think it's so important to like have different so many different types of experiences so that you can see how you change because like every experience is affected by the previous one what was that line from that nana grizzle song all we are is everything and everyone we never be. It's like excavating layers of self and like how this one holds up the next one and that one holds up the next one. It's just important. I think it's really cool. I love like reflecting back on high school now as someone who's like far away from it. Far enough space from the event where like now I am different in certain ways it gives me the ability to one, look back on the ways that I acted and you know, actually be able to like see those differences and then to see the things that happened to me during that year like certain events or things that I participated or just things that happened to me whatever that affected me so that I now act the way that I do and don't act how I would have acted in a certain situation so you know you see the difference then you also see the like causation and you get to like really separate yourself from it to be able to analyze it and so you're not like still in it I find it super hard someone's like wow like what's it like like living on your own I don't know, ask me in two years when I actually do things that are affected by how I'm being changed now. I can't tell you how I'm being changed now. I'm in the middle of it. Oh. So, that's something.